Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to show you guys my delicious jerk pork recipe. Now the great thing about this jerk pork is that you do not have to let it marinate in the fridge before you cook it. This is a one time dish and you just go ahead and pop it right into the oven and let it cook. Low and slow until it's nice and fall off the bone. So before we get into the whole cooking process, let me go over all of the ingredients that I'll be using today. These are all of the ingredients that I'll be needing to make my jerk pork today. What I have here is a pork butt or a pork shoulder and I've gone ahead and washed it thoroughly with some salt and then what I did was I pressed it down with a paper towel so this way I could get any excess moisture off of it. So now to make my jerk seasoning I have some onion, some scallions, as well as some spices. So I have some ground allspice, some cinnamon, some freshly ground nutmeg, and some black pepper. And then I have some grated ginger and the ginger really adds a nice flavor to this jerk seasoning. I also have some garlic and being that I want this jerk seasoning to be very spicy, I have about three scotch bonnet peppers and then I have two pimento peppers to add a nice savory flavor to my dish. I also have some lemon juice and then on the side here I have some honey and this is going to add a nice sweetness. I prefer not to add sugar to my jerk seasoning, I'd rather use the honey. It's a little healthier than the sugar, so that's why I use it. And then I also have my jerk seasoning here. And if you guys would like to see how that's made, I have the link above here in this clip to show you guys how that's made. And I have some salt to taste here. The first step in making this jerk pork is to make the actual jerk seasoning. So what I want to do is I have my food processor here, and I'm going to go ahead and add in all of my onions. I'm adding in my scallions. And you want to make sure that you cut the vegetables roughly. You do not want to put them in whole because the food processor will have a hard time blending it all up. So I just added in my garlic and I'm adding in all of my peppers, the scotch bonnet peppers and the pimento peppers. And then I have my ginger going in. And the ginger also adds a nice bite to the dish. And I have the lemon juice. And I'm going to add the honey. And a little tip about the honey, when you're pouring it into your measuring cup, go ahead and spray it with some cooking spray, so this way when it comes out, it'll all come out all in one, instead of sticking to it. I'm also adding in my green seasoning here, and then you want to add in all of your spices that you had. So now we're going to go ahead and just blend this up. Now that you've finished your jerk seasoning and set it aside, it's time to salt the meat. So once you're done washing it, you want to go ahead and pat it down really well with some paper towels so this way the meat is dry and it'll brown well in the pot when we start that process. So what I'm doing here is I'm salting the meat on both sides. So you can see I salted the first side and now I'm going on the second side to salt it. And this is a pretty large piece of meat so remember that big cuts of meat take a lot of salt and they need that flavor. So go ahead and put as much as your taste desires and then once you do that you want to go ahead and just massage it into the meat. And at this point we're going to go ahead and start the browning process. Today I'll be using a Dutch oven to go ahead and brown my meat and the reason I'm using the Dutch oven is because I'll be able to brown it in here and then go ahead and bake the meat within here also in the oven. If you don't have a Dutch oven then you just want to really make sure that you have a nice heavy bottom pot to brown this meat really well and then you can go ahead and transfer it into any type of bakeware tray and you can bake it in that. So what I'm doing here is I add a little bit of oil into the hot pot and you want to make sure it's on a high heat. You want it screaming hot. So I'm lifting up the piece of meat here very carefully and you want to lie it down on the fat side first. So this way the fat can start rendering up. And you want to put it in there and you can see all of that smoke. You're going to hear a nice sizzle and you just want to let it brown for about 10 minutes on the first side until it's nice and brown and crisp on that one side and then we'll go over and flip it. So I'll show you guys when that part's ready. I left the meat brown on one side for about 10 minutes and you can see it's got a nice golden color and what I did was I flipped it over very carefully and then I want to let it brown on that side and then I'm going to show you guys what I'm going to do next. Just pulled my pork out of the pan and I just wanted to show you guys all of these nice brown bits at the bottom. They're going to add a lot of flavor. So you have some choices with that fat in there. You can go ahead and drain it all off, you could drain half of it off, 
or you could just leave it in like I'm doing today. You want to make sure that every single surface on this pork is nice and brown and you just want to make sure that you do this so this way all of the juices can be sealed in the pork. So what I'm doing at this point is I'm going to go ahead and take my jerk seasoning that I made earlier and you want to spoon about half of it onto the pork here. You want to make sure to spread it out really well and get it evenly throughout this side of the meat. And the reason for this is because when we lay the meat back in the pan, we're going to lay it down seasoning side down. So this way we could pour the rest of the seasoning over the other side of the pork. And this ensures that the seasoning is evenly distributed throughout all of the pork and it all gets nice and flavorful. So I'm using a spoon mainly because it's still very hot and you can't really use your hands. So using the spoon is like the best option at this point. So once you finish doing this, you're going to lay it down, seasoning side down into the hot pot again. Once you've put the pork seasoning side down into that hot pot again, you're going to see that it's going to start to sizzle very nicely. And what you want to do with the rest of that jerk seasoning is go ahead and pour it over the next side of the pork, which is the top side. So once you pour it on, you want to go ahead and just spread it out and make sure that it's evenly distributed throughout the top. And then at this point, we're going to cover it and we're going to put it into the oven so it can cook. I went ahead and I covered my Dutch oven here and this is so that all of the flavors and all of that steam can stay circulating within the pot and cook the meat properly. If you were using a regular baking dish to cook this pork, you'd want to make sure and cover it very tightly with foil wrap to achieve the same effect as you would with the Dutch oven. So what I have here is I've popped it into a 350 degree oven and I'm going to leave it here for about three to four hours depending on how long it takes for the meat to start falling off of the bone. And I'm going to go ahead and check on it and then I'll show you guys what the end product looks like. I just pulled my pork out of the oven and I had it cooking for exactly three hours at 350 degrees. Once that three hours was up I went ahead and removed the cover from the Dutch oven and I set my oven to a high broiling heat so this way it could char the top of the meat. So I went ahead and had it on high broil for about six or seven minutes and as you can see it gave it a nice dark brown crust on the top. So this right here it's done and I'm going to go ahead and just serve it up now. I went ahead and I topped my meat with some thinly sliced onions and some scallions as well as some more scotch bonnet peppers on top. Now if you wanted, you could definitely lessen the amount of pepper to this recipe. Obviously, it just wouldn't be as spicy. But if you're a person that really doesn't like pepper, feel free to reduce the amount of pepper or omit it totally. It'll be totally fine and it'll taste great still. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and just serve it up. I really hope you guys enjoyed cooking with me in the kitchen today. This recipe was really fun to make. And let me tell you what, it was delicious. I really hope that you guys will give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel so this way you can know when I do post new videos as well as comment down below on what you guys would like me to make next. Once again, thanks for watching guys.